Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're going to talk about an interesting study published recently about the importance of sleep. Can the number of hours you sleep every night affect your risk of developing dementia? Let's look at a recent study for some answers. We're going to focus on one specific study that was recently published in Nature Communications. And the reason I want to discuss it here is because it was a study that followed lots of people for a long period of time. These types of studies are so valuable and give so much good information. This study followed almost 8,000 people for 25 years. Wow! The participants entered the study in the mid-1980s, and then at a predetermined time, they would check in with participants so data was collected when the participants were in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. The data collection ended in 2019. Over this 25-year period, 521 people out of almost 8,000 participants developed dementia. So they were able to look back at both the group that did not develop dementia and the group that did develop dementia to see how many hours a night they slept over 25 years. During the check-in, participants were asked, how many hours of sleep do you get on an average weeknight? Response categories were five hours or less, six, seven, eight, and nine hours or more. Researchers then combined categories of sleep duration so that short meant less than six hours per night, normal was seven hours per night, and long was greater than eight hours per night. Most cases of dementia were diagnosed at an average age of 77 years old, and the lowest dementia incidence was observed among those who slept seven hours per night. And the highest incidence of dementia was observed in the participants that slept six hours or less a night. In fact, the risk was 30% greater in these participants. And the study was able to adjust for behaviors and characteristics that might also influence sleep, such as smoking, alcohol use, BMI, education level, and cardiovascular disease to further strengthen the connection between sleep itself and dementia. But which comes first? We know that there is strong evidence that sleep becomes abnormal before dementia is diagnosed. But is it the lack of sleep that's increasing the risk or even causing dementia? Or is poor sleep in your middle ages a very early sign of the dementia that is to come? So that's what's helpful about this study. Most other dementia studies have only had a 10-year follow-up, while this had a 25-year follow-up so it is likely that the participants did not even have early dementia at the time of the start of the study because most dementia was diagnosed after the age of 70 in the participants. But of course, we can't know that for certain. However, there were some limitations to the study. Most of the sleep data was self-reported, which is a subjective measure that's not always accurate. In fact, one study I read showed that people tend to overestimate the amount of sleep they get by about 45 minutes when compared to an objective measurement like an accelerometer found in a smartwatch or a Fitbit. Well, the authors of this study knew this and had 4,000 participants use an accelerometer device, but not until participants were in their early 70s. But the good news is that they found that patients' accelerometer reports were in line with self-reports of sleep length, which is reassuring. However, it would have been even better if the accelerometers had been used throughout the entire study. In addition, participants were all civil servants in Britain and part of a large population-based study called Whitehall II. Most participants were white, better educated, and healthier than the overall British population. And they also relied on electronic medical records for dementia diagnoses which could certainly have missed some cases. But in the end, the conclusion of the study was that short sleep duration in midlife is associated with the higher risk of dementia later in life. Well, why would sleep somehow be associated with dementia? Studies have found that cerebrospinal fluid levels of amyloid, which is the protein that clumps into plaques in patients with Alzheimer's disease, is higher in people that are sleep deprived. And the theory behind this is that while we sleep, the fluid flowing in the brain helps to clear out these proteins. 
and I did a sleep series in August 2020 about the further importance of sleep and how simply getting enough sleep reduces your risk for cancer, diabetes, atherosclerotic disease, depression, anxiety, and weight gain. For those of you that struggle with sleep, please don't let this be another thing for you to worry about as you lie awake at 2 a.m. But do remember that there are some simple things to consider to help increase sleep, such as reducing caffeine intake, going to bed and getting up at the same time every day, limiting your exposure to electronic devices several hours before bedtime, and lowering the temperature of your room by three to five degrees. Please stay away from sleeping pills and consider cognitive behavioral therapy to help with insomnia. Go watch my sleep series. The links are provided in the description below for even more details and information about sleep and ways to treat insomnia. Thanks for joining me.